and welcome to Learn Your Color Computer. So let's begin. I'd like to say a few words about the biggest problem in the computer community today, and that's the closet computers. They're the ones that end up in your closet, alone and neglected, after a few fun hours with playing some games. This usually takes place a few months after Christmas, when somebody buys a color computer for the kids to play with. Then when the fun wears off, into the closet it goes, to sit and gather dust, never to realize its full potential. Some folks may have just had it break down on them and decided not to get it fixed, even for a blown fuse. Well, this has gone on for too long now. With the millions of computers in people's homes today, only a few thousand of them have taken the time to learn their computer and take advantage of the remarkable power available in the small white case. Some people have even used their computers to run their own businesses. But this is not enough. If everybody who owned a closet computer was to become a serious color computer user, we'd be a more powerful group than any other. And this is what the series of shows is all about. So let's begin. Hi, and welcome to the fourth installment of Learn Your Color Computer. In this installment, we'll teach you about the commands of print at, random, set, reset, joystick, and peak. The print at command is a variation on the regular print command, with the exception that print at allows you to place your screen output on a specified part of the screen instead of just the next available part. With the print at command, here's how your screen is divided. Your screen is divided into a grid of 32 columns numbered from 0 to 31 and rows which are numbered from 0 to 15 in increments of 32. Say you wanted to place a letter A five rows down and three columns over. You would multiply your row by four and add two for your column. Notice we multiplied by four to find the row position and added two to find the third column. This is because the grid starts counting at zero instead of one. A good rule to follow in this case would be to multiply your row by 32, then subtract another 32 to compensate. Then take your column number and subtract one from that to compensate. The resulting number is your screen location. In the example of five rows and three columns, this would, giving us, this would be giving us a resulting screen location of 130. So we would print at 130 to place our text. Type in this short program to demonstrate. Line 10, clear screen. Line 20, print at 130, comma, A, line 30, end. Now run the program and notice what's happened. The letter A was indeed printed at row 5, column 3. You can use this command using any screen location from 0 to 511. It's not even totally necessary to use an actual number with the printat command. As a matter of fact, you can use a variable or a constant number in place of an actual number. A constant number would be doing about the same thing as using a regular number but it'll save you a lot of ver valuable memory space later on in larger programs. Using a variable with the printat command can really be a fun experience. When a variable is used with the printat, the variable is changed. So, so the actual screen location 
will be changed as well. Say we wanted to print something like a row of X's. We can use the print at with a variable. To accomplish this task, we would get some really nice results by typing in something like this. For y equals 224 to 230. Colon. Print at y, comma, x, semicolon, colon, next, y. And sure enough, we get a row of seven x's in the middle portion of the screen as planned. Notice how we used the variable of y to take the place of the actual number used in the printout command. In this situation, the variable of y was equal to every whole number from 224 to 230. Now let's talk about the random command, which is spelled RND. This command is used to generate random numbers between 0 and any other whole number that you specify. The specified number appears in parentheses following the command name. Say if you wanted to pick a random number between 0 and 500, you would use a program something like this. Line number 10, R equals random, open parentheses, 500, close parentheses. Line 20, print, quote, random number was, quote, R. Line 30, end. Now run this program several times and you'll see that it comes up with a different number each time as the random number. There does seem to be one, more, one drawback to this. Your lowest number sh would always be zero. You may be wondering what, would you, what you would do if you wanted your lowest number to be 50 instead of zero. This is a relatively simple situation with a simple answer. You would use an if-then construct to examine the conditions and redirect the program's intentions. Add line number, fi number 15 to the program like this. 15 if r less than 50 then go to 10. What this will do is tell the program to pick another number without reporting if the random number chosen was less than 50. Now run the program several times and you'll see that the, your range of random numbers has now changed from the original 0 to 500 to where it's from 50 to 500. Now let's talk about how we can make things a little more colorful around here. We'll start with the set command and its partner, the reset command. The set command places a color dot on the screen in one of the nine colors we discussed when we talked about the clear screen command. The reset command is used in reverse manner to that of the set command in that it erases a color dot from the screen. These commands are not very difficult to understand and are mastered quickly. Following the command name, there must be three pieces of data enclosed in parentheses separated by commas. In the reset command, only two pieces of data are required. 
first thing you must know about these two commands is that they look at the screen in a 64 by 32 grid. Exactly double that of the printat command. This is because they use exactly the same character places except that each place is divided into four smaller squares of two by two formation, thus the double screen size. Anyway, the first piece of data is the number of the desired column, which is a number from 0 to 63. The second piece of data is the desired row, which is a number from 0 to 31. The third piece of data, which is used on the set command only, but not on the reset command, is the desired color, which is a number from 0 to 8. These three pieces of data will tell, the, will tell where to place the dot and what color it should be. So that you can see what's going on here, type in this short program. New. New. Line 10. CL equals 32. Line 20. RW equals 16. Line 30, DC equals 3. Line 40, set open parentheses, CL, comma, RW, comma, DC, close parentheses. Now run the program and you should see a blue dot appear at the approximate center of the screen. This is because line 10, we told the program that the column number was 32, which is half of 64, or the width of the screen. In line 20, we told the program the row was 16, which is half of 32, or the half the height of the screen. In line 30, we told the program that the color of the dot should be blue, which is code number 3. Then in line 40, line 40, we did the actual dot setting. Try substituting the value of the CL variable with 33 and see what happens. Type 10. CL equals 33. Now run the program, and if you typed it correctly, you should see the same dot, except it's moved over by one dot space to the right. Now let's take a look at the joystick command. If you, if you haven't already done so, plug a joystick into the right port on the back of the computer marked right joystick. If there's no joystick plugged in, BASIC will not be able to read the electrical values from it and will result in awkward readings. Next, let's start with typing this program in. New. Line 10. Clear screen, 0. Line 20. Print at zero, comma, joystick, open parentheses, zero, close parentheses, comma, joystick, open parentheses, one, close parentheses, line 30, go to, 20. Now run the program and note what happens at the top of the screen. You see two numbers. At the top of your screen, you should see two numbers. 
the first one represents left to right or right to left movements of the right joystick. The second number represents up and down or down and up movements of the joystick. Move the stick up and down and left and right. As you move the stick, you'll notice that the first number varies between 0 and 63, and the second number varies from 0 to 31. This matches the screen grid used with the set command. To emphasize how this can be of use to you, retype line 20 like this. Set, open parentheses, joystick, open parentheses, zero, close parentheses, comma, joystick, open parentheses, one, close parentheses, comma, three. Now run the program again and move the stick around a little bit. If all has gone well, you'll be painting blue dots all over the screen. As you can see, what you're doing is using the data from the joystick as a set of variables for the set command's coordinates. Using the joystick from the left port is just as easy and can be accomplished by simply changing to the numbers for ports 2 and 3. To remember which joystick does what, remember this short four-line chart. Joystick 0 equal right horizontal. Joystick 1 equal right vertical. Joystick 2 equal left horizontal. And joystick 3 equal left vertical. Notice that the joystick's command is spelled without the IC in it. Remember that so you won't get errors in your joystick intensive programs. Let's take a look at the peak command. The peak command is used to read a numeric value from a specified memory address. Say you wanted to find out what the value stored at memory address 65280 was equal to. We would use the peak command with the address we want to look at inside of a set of parentheses. As an example, type in this short program. Clear out memory with new. And we start with line 100. P equals peak, open parentheses, 65280, close parentheses, line 110, print at 0, comma, P, line 120, go to 100. Now run the program and watch what happens when you press the joystick's fire button. This is because the address 65280 is the official memory address for the fire buttons. When you press the joystick fire button, the computer changes the value of this address, making it easy for you to include the joystick fire buttons into any programs you write. The peak command can be used to examine the contents of any address in the computer's memory, which has a range from absolute zero to 65535. Better yet, we can use it to examine all the addresses in the computer's memory. Let's do just that. Type in this short program. OK, clear out memory with the new command. And we start with line 10. Clear screen. Line 20 for A equals 0, 2, 
65535. Line 30, P equals peak, open parentheses, A, close parentheses. Line 40, print, character string, open parentheses, P, close parentheses, semicolon. Line 50, next, A. Line 60, end. Now run the program, and what we see looks like a bunch of random characters. In reality, the characters aren't random. This is what's actually in the computer's memory. As a matter of fact, you may even see a few command names formed as the text scrolls by. Press break key to get out of the program, and we'll take a look at what we're actually doing with this program. What we've done is go into a loop which starts at the bottom of the computer's memory and continues on to the end of the computer's memory. Each pass through the loop gets us the next address to look at and places it in the A variable. We then do a peak of the address in the A variable and that gives us the number stored at that address which we place in the P variable. Then using the character string command we convert the number in the P variable into an understandable character which we then print. Don't worry about the character string command. That'll be covered in a later show. But for now, let's just be concerned with the commands we've gone over today. And that is, first, we went over the printat command. We've seen how that can be used to put some screen output to a specified location on, a on the screen instead of what's available next. Then we went over the random command. And we've seen how this can be used to generate random numbers of any size that we need. We've also gone over the set and reset commands and how the set command puts a dot on the screen where you specify and the reset command rubs it out. We've also gone over the joystick command and how to use it with BASIC to get values from the joystick. And last but not least, we went over the peak command and saw how it can be used to read any memory location in the computer at all. I seem to be running short on time, so I'll have to go for now. But keep working on the commands we've learned. They'll be, become more important as you continue to learn your color computer. All right, Chris, uh, we've been into your show now for the listening public for a while, and we were wondering, what do you feel is the biggest benefit that the public will get from, from your show? Well, the thing I feel they'll benefit from most is the information that we're giving. People who otherwise wouldn't have time to sit and read a book to learn the basic language can learn it from this show. I see. You, uh, you understand that some of these things are uh, rather advanced for them, and I noticed you had a phone number flashing during the show. What, uh, what do you attribute that uh, it's going to be a uh, source of information for these people who are watching? Well, the phone number 277-6880 is the number that we're using where people can call in and get information about things they've seen on the show, like if they have questions about a command or if they just have a question about our club. I see. Now, uh, suppose they don't own a color computer. Um, even though it is one of the most popular computers in town. Mm -hmm. What if they own a different type of computer? Will you be able to offer them any assistance with their programming? Definitely. I've, I've messed with enough of the different types of computers over the past few years that I could basically just cross-reference their questions. I see. Well, that, that'll be a benefit to the entire listing public, but uh, not, not to really 
harbor on anything. But this cocoa seed that you mentioned, this is really a, a worthwhile effort that uh, allows people to, in groups, to meet and have fun and enjoy their computers and everything. And I know it's a good, wholesome atmosphere. We have a lot of young kids that come to the meetings, too. But at these meetings, what do you think would benefit a person that came to his first meeting? Well, first, he'd be uh, becoming in contact with people who have knowledge of what he needs to know and people who can help him learn it. I see. And he, if he doesn't have advanced equipment or something, he'll have the opportunity to see what more sophisticated equipment attaches to the uh, color computer itself, I believe. Right. Uh, just about all the equipment we've got, it'll, it'll be backwards compatible with, uh, with all the older machines and minimal systems. So they can get information for just about any system. Yeah. Well, one other thing I want to ask you. The particular uh, computer that we're doing the show with, this is 128K, which is 128,000 bytes of memory. Is there a way to make this computer a little more powerful? Yes, there is a memory upgrade board that you can get from, you know, from Radio Shack or from another third-party vendor. And this one board will increase the memory to 512K or 512,000 bytes. That's pretty powerful, huh? Oh, yeah. It, what would you rate it in power as compared to? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's very powerful. It, you, when, you, when you start off with the 128K, you know, you've got some pretty, pretty good stored up power there. But when you put in the 512K, you've got enough space to keep more things in memory and do things faster as well. Well, we're running out of time. Appreciate you having me back on your show again. I enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be back next week with... Uh, with Learn Your Color Computer. See you then. Thank you for watching. We hope that you've enjoyed the show and that every person that watched will benefit from the information we've supplied. Remember that using your computer is a process best learned by repetition, so spend a little time with the computer and get to know the information we've given. Remember, if you have a problem with any of the information we've supplied, give us a call. One of our many experienced members of our club will be more than glad to help you with your information. If you missed a show, let us know. We can have a tape of the show you missed ready for you to view at the next meeting. That's about all the time we have for now. So tune in again next time when we continue to learn your color computer.